<laughs> you were talking about money, Mark. Separate yourself <laughs> widely from the pack moving forward. Is that something that you would be willing to, to have a discussion about? Because they didn't get it. They, they were probably like, didn't right. get it. Welcome back to Key Factors Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Jones, and we are sponsored by ReviewMyMortgage.com, the largest index of mortgage programs nationally. Got some pretty good news to share with you guys about ReviewMyMortgage.com, but we will wait till the end on that. Um, before we go any further, I do want to introduce my guest today. And without further ado, we've got Danielle Voigt Krushak. <laughs> yeah. How are you mouthful, doing? Huh? It is a mouthful. I know. <laughs> but I got it out. I'm good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Don't ask me to spell it. So I explained to Mark <laughs> that, you know, my last name is actually Krushak. I'm married. Gotcha. But you know, wait, I'm just lazy and never changed it with track. So we've got to say it all. <laughs> I doubt that it was a lazy thing, more so just a like a paperwork. convenient there. Yeah. Um, I'm sure being in real estate, as long as you have, there's a lot of pieces yes. of marketing out there among many other things. So before we take this further, if you can, just for a moment, let the folks know who you are, uh, where you came from, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. So um, I knew Mark from a previous life. Yeah. Um, and early on in my college years, um, kind of didn't really know what exactly I was going to be doing. Um, had a lot of hardship kind of happen around 19, 20 years old. Um, moved to Oklahoma where my family had relocated and decided, hey, I need to get into something. I need to sure. be doing something. And a lot of my family, um, extended family, my grandparents, um, brothers and sisters were all in real estate, aunts, uncles. Um, and so my mom was like, you know, you really love sales. You like marketing. I think this would be a good natural path for you. And I needed to just do something. Sure. So I started, um, up in Oklahoma. Um, I knew no one <laughs> <laughs> and this was in like 2008. Oh, time. wow. Wow. So like right before the, the crash. crash. <laughs> yeah. And, and not knowing anyone or, um, and the market that I was in was very unique because, um, majority of the people were very, a lot older mm -hmm. and I was very, very young, young, Yeah, you know? And so, um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to start. Um, I had a, a mentor that kind of was like, Hey, why don't you just go and ask who you can intern with? Do mm -hmm. it for free, you know, go and go to these small little boutique, um, brokerages there and see if you can, um, just learn. Sure. And so I went thinking, okay, you know, they're going to welcome me because I'm doing this for free. And I got turned away multiple times because wow. um, they just weren't interested in new. At all, especially at that new. time. Yeah. Right. And they were set in their ways and no, well, so I met, um, finally went to one company and it was United Country. Okay. And it was a husband and wife team. They had just moved to, and it was in Ardmore, Oklahoma. So they had just moved there too. So they were kind of new as mm -hmm. well. And they said, yeah, sure, you can you can work for us for free. We'll teach you and just shadow us. And um, so I learned from them. <laughs> they were like, hey, yeah, come on, yeah, free come labor? On, come on. <laughs> Wait, how old are you? Okay, we're good. Okay, Above we're good. 18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're legal. We're yeah. good. Um, but they were super patient with me. And um, I learned so much from them. Uh, the husband, he did a lot of like ranch uh, okay. real estate. Um, the wife, she's just so positive. They're still, you know, killing it out there. Um, but anyway, I started with them and the crash hit. Oof, yeah. So, and, it, and it was almost delayed. It was like 2008. It, it happened, but it still hadn't happened. Then 2009 right, came around. The residual. Yes. I was in banking at the time and I was like, what are you talking about? It's, it's yeah. People are still depositing money. We're good. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, which, okay. Which there, it was a whole unique thing because... The price points are way different there. The clientele is way different sure. there. So your average price back then for a home, and we're talking about 2008, I mean, you could get a home, like the nicest homes were $80,000. Yeah, I believe $100, that. $100,000. Um, so very different. Um, and, and just the whole, everything was by hand. Sure. And you'd go pick up the keys from the offices and stuff, <laughs> just way different. Um, but anyway, my first clients, by the time I got my license there, it took me like two or three months to to get licensed. Um, it was a little young couple with a baby, and they bought this home. Um, and it was such a unique situation <laughs> because the home that they bought, 
had actually like had burn damage from a fire. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> there was like a lot, you know, a learning curve with it all. <laughs> On but your they first were one. so happy, like, mm-hmm. it, you know, because they were getting a home. Yeah. And so I don't know, it would just, it, it's one of those things like it gives you like this buzz, you know, Absolutely. of like being able to help. And, and I feel like we are almost, we're not in a crash, not no. even close, no. but I feel like we're in that market again to where. I get to feel that again. Um, It's been the last three, four years to where anybody could get a home. Mm -hmm. Anybody could get a deal on a home or or so they thought. The sellers thought they were getting a good deal. The buyers thought they were getting a good deal because of the rates and things Mm -hmm. of that nature. But right now, it's like a real scrappy time in the market to where you help somebody with their credit. And they go and find the first home and are crying on the on the Zoom call to go over their options like, I never thought this would be happening. Right. And it's like, the, boom. The gratitude. That, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's yeah. sucking me right back in yeah. these days, uh, yeah. just so you know. I uh, love that, that aspect of it. Um, and I just, it's one of those things that just keeps you motivated to go to the next deal. Yeah. You know, but so anyway, that was my first kind of, you know, experience. And I was super, super grateful. And I still have the picture of us on that house. I was so young and, but it was just such a really cool time. But shortly after that, you know, things started to change. And so, um, you know, there it's way different title wise than it is here. Mm. Your, your closings there take like average 45 days at the time. So they weren't like 30 laid back. Yeah. Well, because a lot of it is Indian territory. Okay. It goes back, you oh. know, to when the Indians are Yeah, you've got to search, search. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. real title issues. Right. <laughs> so it takes longer. So, you know, you'd, you'd plan to do a deal and I'm young, you know, okay, I'm going to close this deal. And the next thing you know, they're falling apart left and right. And it has nothing to do with the buyer or right. the seller. It's, it's the thing, deed. Right. And things are changing constantly wow. and, and, you know, the process. And so it was, it was rough. So I can imagine you learned quite a bit within right. that first couple of years <laughs> yes. uh, uh, quickly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and you look at today and I've read many different pieces that Oklahoma is going to be the new semi San Antonio type situation. Yeah. Why? Because the land is so cheap, mm-hmm. the, the homes are still affordable and there's nothing there yet in right. regards to infrastructure and big business and things of that nature. Right. Um, but that's that's exciting to, yeah. to be a part of the, the ground roots of something like that. Right. Now, you've been in the business, what? 15, a lot of years. 15 a lot, years. <laughs> a lot of years. 15 years. years. Um, <laughs> that surpasses me. Yeah. I've, I got in this business in 2012. Okay. Um, all together as a lender, uh, real estate, the whole nine yards, but yeah. didn't start till 2012. Yeah. So I've been in it for 15 years. It feels like, you know, like no time at all. Yes. Um, but, you know, I have learned a lot. Um, I, I ended up having to get a second job and I ended up having my first daughter, which is a huge motivator for me and why she I'm doing... She looks like your twin, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I had my first daughter and I was a single mom. And so I had to work an additional job. I kept my license there, but, um, you know, just kind of needed extra income. Right. I moved back to Texas in 2014. Okay. And um, I needed a job. So I ended up working for um, a guy that um, had a bunch of... Uh, like ranch real estate. Okay. Farm and ranch. Farm and ranch. And owned um, a bunch of different businesses in Delaware and was liquidating a bunch of those and was um, having me help like be his personal assistant. Gotcha. So I did that um, right when I moved back and he, we ended up getting through that process and he said, um, you know, what do you want to do ultimately? Do you want to get back into real estate? Is that your goal? You know, what's, what's the plan here? Um, I have like an accounting position, which I had zero interest in. Um, But, you know, if you want to get into real estate, I may have a connection for you. So I was like, I would love to do that, but I have, I'm still a single mom. Like I got baggage. I need, (laughs) right, (laughs) right, for sure. And so I need, you know, income. And he said, "Um, well, I have a guy that I think is is my real estate agent and I think would be a good fit for you. Um, He does farm and ranch and has a team and needs help with transactions and marketing and that kind of thing. And so I ended up working for a team, Wilcox team. And um, 
I was with them for a long time, um, ended up moving over, did their marketing, did their transaction coordination and all of that. And by 2019, I um, we were just kind of going in different directions. Sure. Um, and so I started my own team. Boom. Yeah. That's awesome. Started my own team. And at that time, and by this point, you know, I'm, I'm married and have mm-hmm. um, another daughter. And um, I was mentoring some girls. Okay. So some young girls that one had like aged out of foster care and then the other one um, had parents that were incarcerated. Mm. And so they just needed like fellowship. Yeah. So I ended up um, just mentoring them and wanted my real estate team to be, I felt like God was like leading me to having it have more of a purpose. I gotcha. And so when I started the team, it was, okay, let's let's do this, but do it with purpose. So um, when we close a transaction, we're going to tithe and we're going to give back and we're going to volunteer and we're going to have it mean more. That's you know? awesome. And so um, simultaneously, I started a ministry at the same time. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Which that has taken, that's a whole nother. <laughs> Holy cow. It takes, a, it takes a long time. I'm sure. But we're finally 501c3 certified. Okay. Um, but we're able to help now. Um, uh, so, um, youth, like right. kids that have aged out of foster care, um, their parents are incarcerated, little to no family support. So, um, the driver for that portion was because I was a single mom yeah, and I had lived on both ends of the spectrum. So when I was in o- Oklahoma and the market crash and all that, I had to get creative, mm-hmm. but I was on, at that time I was on food stamps. Mm-hmm. I was on TANF. I was on all the things. Yeah. But, and I had a social worker with my first um, daughter and she was like, Danielle, this is a temporary solution to a long-term problem. Like you got to figure it out. Gotcha. Basically motivating you to right. find another solution right. because you, figure you can't it out. live on this. Right. This isn't, this isn't supposed to be something that you're codependent on. Like right. you need to figure it out. And so um, I always just had that as a motivator of like, I need to make this, you know, make this work and I need to be able to provide for my daughter and for me. And so, um, you know, I've always just had that in the back of my head. And when I was on the Wilcox team, like I went from, you know, having hardly anything to, you holy know, cow, holy there, cow. It, the, there's the whole world. Yeah. To, you <laughs> so know, let's, let's stop there for a minute yeah. and talk about your experience in going from Oklahoma, yeah. coming to San Antonio and, and the hill country and going, all right. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing something. Yeah. And then you meet up with the gentleman that refers you to the Wilcox team. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Was it culture shock? I mean, because you're going from, all right, I was in real estate. I was doing transactions, but I wasn't doing them at this rate and this volume. I mean, it was like that level. Correct. Yeah. So. I mean, we're talking about somebody here, guys, that spends quite a bit in marketing and throws at least (laughs) two major events that I've been a part of and may or may not have dressed up like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, yes. So to kind of give some perspective on that, like my first closing, the one with the little couple, I think I made like 500 bucks. Sure. I mean. But back then, 2008, 500 yeah. bucks in the grand scheme of thing, right. based on the work that you did was like, Holy cow, I could do this. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like, because it took me a long time okay. to get to that yeah. point. Yeah, you're like, that one was like, no. So I feel like, eh, you know, like um, maybe I'm a little in the red sure. here, you know, but um, definitely still grateful and loved. You still had the high of regardless course. because, the, you know, it was more about them getting the home that they wanted. Sure. But yes, like going to, um, from that to the Wilcox team, and being able to make substantial checks. Sure. I mean, it is life changing, you mm-hmm. know, and and I am grateful for that right. opportunity of getting to learn. And, um, you know, I mean, I feel like it, um, I don't know, it just. Would you say that it, it um, at a certain point, our perception of what's going on in the world, in your current world is like this big, then all of a sudden, a door opens, mm-hmm. you peek through, and it's like, whoa, that's a 
totally different world. And it's that attainable. I didn't think, yeah, th- that's what I was going to say is I didn't think was possible, but uh-huh. not only now is it possible, but it's like right there. Well, and you have to realize too, the mentality a lot in, in Oklahoma because of kind of the culture and stuff is this is as, this is the best you're going to do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I can't tell you how many times people told me like, you just need to be grateful for where you're at. Like, you're not going to succeed any mm. further than this. Like, this is what it is. Like, you know, and so it makes you start to kind of believe question, it. Yeah, yeah. It, believe it and question yourself. Like, man, I really thought that, you know, all my dreams are squashed now. Right. But then, yes, you have a little taste of that of like, yes, you know, these, these possible, you know, these things are a possibility mm-hmm. and um, can be my reality. And, um, I've always been very, uh, I have a really good work ethic. Like I want yeah. to work. I'm very self-motivated. Absolutely. And so I feel like in this business, you can totally do that. You yeah. know, um, it's all about limiting yourself in your mind. That's right. And, you know, and if you tell yourself you can do it, you can. Um, but also I feel like the people that are around you have a big impact. Absolutely. And, and that's, know, that's why that. when you read books about um, success, when you ask um, somebody that you believe is successful, uh, what they believe is the best way to get there. And, and number one is like surround yourself with people that you would like to emulate. Uh, surround right. yourself. You are your surroundings. That's right. a true statement. Um uh, similar to you are what you eat. Absolutely. It's the yeah. same concept as that. And yeah. I think there needs to be more discussion around that because yeah. there are too many people, especially on social media, yeah. that are limiting the 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 minds of others mm-hmm. to become successful and overcome all those objections that they have in their life. Um, and it ends up, I don't know, creating this false narrative of what true success is, right. like you said, you're doing great. You, you can't get much better than that. So be happy with it. Like, hold up. To who? <laughs> exactly. If you're okay with this, then that's fine. But yeah. maybe I want more, more. you know? Yeah. And so it's interesting to see because now, you know, my first daughter, obviously, she's from Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> so I still have to go back <laughs> gotcha. and forth. Yeah. Okay. So it's interesting to see, like, how that narrative has kind of changed for them. Like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. You are doing it. Right. You know? Okay. You know? <laughs> yes. And so um like I am. Well, <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a moment that you every once in a while get a chance to flex. Mm-hmm. And a lot of folks think that that is uh frowned upon and this and that, but it, I think it's justifiable every once in a while. Now, if you're out there flexing around <laughs> everywhere, hey, different story. Yeah. But um in addition, hoping that it shows those other people that, hey, right. you too can be successful. Right. So my <laughs> my whole thing now, especially with the ministry and like mm-hmm. kids that have come from backgrounds where they're again, like they have been limited by yeah. their situations and they're like, I, I can never attain this. You mm-hmm. know, this isn't this isn't possible. Um, I try to be that hope. You know, I feel like God's put me in this position to be able to be like, hey, like it is totally possible. I came from being on the same systems that you guys are on. Right. And everything that I ask them to do, they have strategic plans and things they have to meet. And it's nothing that I haven't done my own self. So I think, and yes, you can you can go the one way and be kind of cocky with it, but you can also inspire and absolutely and give that hope. Like this is totally possible. It's up to you, because um, I'm I'm very much like help help me help you. Right. You got to participate in your own rescue. And I you, love that. You have to you know take the first steps and. Um, you know, we all have our days where we're like, of course. we don't want to do it. But, you know, if you... But that means you're human. Right, right. <laughs> but if you can get your mind right and just put those action steps behind it and just one day after another, my dad always says, you know, how do you eat, eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right. So it's like, if you can just chip away at it, you know, it is possible and yeah. you can do those things. And definitely networking helps mm-hmm. and having relationships, which is what, what we try to do within the ministry is like connect them with people that they may not have had as a resource. Sure. Because that is one benefit that I have had is I do know a lot of people here back in San Antonio. So that did help me yeah. um, get to where I'm at. So we try to help others that may not have that yeah. benefit, you know? Um, so right now, I mean, you're, you're opening up the opportunity for us to have somewhat of a different discussion than we normally do, which is more of a self-help kind of conversation. Right. <laughs> and I want it to resonate with the listeners, with the viewers. 
what if we took the next like five minutes or so to map out a, you were here, mm -hmm. what first step did you take? Mm -hmm. And what was the next step? And what was the next step? Because then after that, it's almost as if you don't have a book that is written that you essentially go through to make sure that this is the right path. Right. Once you get past that, I don't know, big hurdle of, wow, it's possible. Yeah. Then you're just doing consistent things to see opportunities and capture right. those opportunities and work harder than the next guy. Right. But what were those initial steps that you took to kind of get out of that situation? Out of the funk? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, at the time um, in Oklahoma, I had a social worker and okay. she was very tough love. Okay. I'm all about that. <laughs> I think there's not a lo love. enough tough love in the world it's anymore. It's funny because she was like, um, <laughs> uh, she was just like a gruff old like lady smoker, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is fine, whatever. But it's like, I don't know. It's, she's what I needed. Yeah. She's what I needed. And she was like, we're going to make you a binder. Okay. And you're going to make a binder and you're going to put the days on here, you're gonna have a calendar and you're gonna write out your goals. Are you gonna go to school or are you gonna work? Which thing are you gonna do? I'm like, okay. I, at the time I was like, okay, I guess I'll try school. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> you know, and I tried nursing, that didn't go well. So she's she came back, she said, okay, then you're gonna work. Like, here you know, it is. that didn't work out. What are you gonna do? Call them right now. So it was very much like, don't sit on this. Right. I'm sitting right here, we're gonna do it. So gotcha. I'm very much like that with my team is like, okay, you set a goal. Okay, let's do it. Let's make a plan. Yeah. Let's set a date. And then I'm going to hold you accountable for that. And so because she did that for me. So you've mentioned two <laughs> things thus far that I believe are huge. Mm -hmm. The first thing is setting your goal. Right. Um, well, actually, you've said three things. Setting your goal. Uh, and in my opinion, I don't think it's enough to just set the goal. Set the goal and write it down. Right. Write it down and put it in a place that you can continuously look at that. And it's looking right back at you <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I still haven't done it. Yeah. Which leads to the next thing, which is taking action. Mm -hmm. You've got to put the wheels in motion. Yep. You've got to stop um, skipping rocks, standing on the sidelines, and jump in the water. Right. Do you, how do you learn how to swim? You jump your ass in there and you start paddling. Right. until you, you, you keep your head above water. Right. And then the third thing is getting somebody that can hold you accountable, that can help you hold yourself accountable. Right. Uh, I think it's too much for people to ask of themselves to hold themselves accountable right. when you're already in a situation to where you're doubting yourself. Right. Um, so getting an accountability partner is huge. I don't see it as a crutch or anything. I see right. it as a tool and, right. and a coach type situation. Yeah. So those three thus far, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the next thing, which related to my situation at the time with my daughter's dad, which him and I get along fine now, but at the time, you know, we didn't. You're punk kids. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, the biggest thing she said was stop focusing on the negative. Stop focusing on what you're, whatever, you know, all the negative that's going on around you. Yeah. And try to reframe it. Look at the positive, you know, um, if they're, and so I would say, you know, for real estate and for anything like that, be around the, you know, surround yourself with the people that you want, your hype crew. Yeah. You know, our, our team is really big on hyping each other out, up and encouraging one another. And I think it's really important to have that encouragement, yeah. have the accountability and have the tough love, but also don't focus on what everybody else is doing and the negative. Try to surround yourself with what you want right. to be. Right. You know, and... Um, Would you consider that somewhat of getting away from the victim mentality? Right. You know, right. I think we've got a lot of folks um, that believe that things are happening to them right. versus what have they done to create something for themselves. Right. Uh, and it's 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 hurting a lot of folks. And yeah. then they get this, I don't know, bubble that they live in. Mm -hmm. And now they can't see outside of the bubble. Right. So eventually they're going to blind themselves by it or somebody's going to come around, and give them better perspective on what's going on right. so that they can move forward, move past it. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going. Ooh, this is good stuff. <laughs> good morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think that, and then just having check-ins, Okay. Um, you know, making intentional time and even 
not knowing when that that time is going to be for someone to hold you accountable. Yeah. You know, is someone going to call up and be like, hey, did you do X, Y, Z? Are mm-hmm. you, you know, surrounding yourself with these people? You know, are you doing all the things that you set for yourself? Right. Because ultimately it's your goals. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things I tell my my team is like, these are, and when we set goals, it's not just real estate. It's, mm-hmm. you know. Life goals. It's life goals. Awesome. It's, it's, you know, anywhere from, you know, I want to work out more to, you know, their spiritual life to, you know, their their work and how many deals they want to accomplish. And then I hold them accountable. We write it on the calendar. Like, for instance, today, I have a girl on my team named Claire, and she's supposed to be spending time with her kids. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to let her know, hey, how's the... <laughs> how's that kid <laughs> how's time the, going? How's the kid time going, yeah. you know? So because we get so busy as, sure. you know, that we need to spend that intentional time with our kids. So anyway, um, I think it's important to have those little touch points and then not necessarily knowing when those are going to be right right you know somewhat surprise visits right because in essence if it was um plotted and planned out every single time it's easy to fake the funk right it's super simple to fake or procrastinate sure you know you know i'm gonna wait till the night before and then cram it all in there you go i mean yeah so I feel like one of the things that that um, the guy that I work for as his personal assistant, he was very um, direct and you never knew when he was going to fly in. You never knew. what. And so I am so appreciative of that time with him because he would give me research projects to do and I would never know when he would show up gotcha. and he would be like, OK, I want to see everything. <laughs> and he was very like there was no BS like. This is what it is. So I feel like that taught me a lot of um, like self-motivation. And, sure. and I think that that's so important in our industry. It is. You it's, have to be willing to do man, it's, the work. Man, it's something that I talk about quite often. Um, both things, willingness to do the work, but also being direct and finding a way to not necessarily be direct and rude. It's just, I want to be direct. There's no BSing what I'm trying to convey to you because right. th- we're dealing with life situations right um big purchases big needle moving activities life-changing things right and i think the concept of sugar coating around things Mm -hmm. ends up wasting time truly and time is something we never get back (laughs) (laughs) it just isn't yeah um go ahead continue sorry i wish i was a little better about about (laughs) i think we (laughs) all sugar sugar coating things i'm like i need to um you know work on being more direct it's Every time we have, because we'll do like evaluations and stuff like every quarter, and I'm like, okay, team, like, what can I do better? Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Really yeah, hurt. no, and like, I ask the same too thing. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and half my team would say I'm too nice. The other half would say you're too direct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, well, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one? How do I stay in the middle? Yeah. Um, and it's it's a tough thing for a leader like yourself, right. like myself, that we are leading a team and we don't know the perfect path for right. that. Balance. Um, we are constantly learning. educating ourselves. We're constantly learning. We're yeah. constantly uh, asking and seeking for direct feedback. Like, Help me help you. Right. If you're not honest with me, how the hell do I know what I'm doing wrong? Right. Um, but yeah, that, that that makes sense. It makes good sense. Yeah. So I think that is a pretty good path. Yeah, a little start. Yeah, absolutely. At, at least a start. And I didn't want to take anybody down any roads of, okay, <laughs> now sign up at the bottom of your screen, <laughs> dial the number. Because we don't have that. <laughs> yeah, not yet. That's <laughs> we awesome. don't have that, but maybe we need to. <laughs> maybe. Uh, but it does give some folks some hope that... Yeah. It's possible yeah. and it's Make possible. Make a plan. Make a plan, put the, put the stuff in action, find somebody to help you become accountable and then continue. One thing I heard yesterday on a, um, I like to watch YouTube videos and stuff, which now I'll, be, now I'll be watching, you know, I think mortgage. Um, <laughs> but I think it's really important to do like to-do list. I love doing lists, yep. even if I have to rewrite the list. But one of the things I heard yesterday um, was to do a to-don't list. Mm. Things that you don't want to be doing anymore. Okay. And I think that... That's um, pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. It's a different angle. Like, okay, I don't want to, you know, be wasting time on social media. Or I won't, you know, I don't want to, whatever. Try to reframe that. Yeah. You know, things that you want to take out so that you are more productive. Or you I are like more. that a lot. I mean, so... Uh, a couple of folks on my team, essentially, and, and when you watch this back, you'll know who you are. And it's another reminder. <laughs> the idea behind, like you said, social media. And I walk around the office all day long and I'm like, hey, remember, you're a creator, not a consumer. 
Why? Because right. they're just scrolling. Wh- mm-hmm. What are you looking for? You can scroll to the bottom of the earth. <laughs> you don't find right. anything else. Uh, right. Why don't you be the person that is using that intentionally to create, get business. Fo- create business, create opportunity, mm-hmm. create mm-hmm. top of mind sense? Um, right. Because the idea behind it is it's super powerful, but it's also super powerful the other way. You suck you right. in and all of a sudden... Two hours went by and right. you're like, damn, what? where, where did the time go? Right. Well, you were stuck in this. And yes, it's totally uh, intended to, uh, uh, what is that called? Your, your um, I don't know, the, the things in your brain. Subconscious. That, well, like, it's, it's like sparking the, right? the endorphins, not the endorphins. What the hell is that called? JC, help me out. What is that? What is it? Dopamine. <laughs> there you go. You got all the dopamines firing on all cylinders. So right. it's, it, you're like... This is easy to get sucked in. Right. I personally have been sucked in at times and I got to remind myself, hey, yeah. <laughs> get off of this yeah, and go do something. I've been on both. Mm-hmm. I've been on both. And um, I think a big portion of our business comes from social media. Same here. You know, um, but it's it's hard to not get sucked in mm-hmm. and to do that thing. Um, there's some apps that I use um, that kind of help me try to mitigate a little bit sure, of that. Sure. Um, I use an app called Planoly. Have you heard of that? No. Tell me well, more. It plans your post. Okay. So basically you can plan everything that you're doing so that, because what we tend to do is post and then you're like, okay, now Let I want to see what's yep. going on. Well, this post it for you and you can kind of see how, like I like things to look cohesive. Sure, sure. So this plans it all out and you know, you can kind of move That's the tiles cool. and things like that. And then you can just plan it and it'll just post it on its own so that, it's stuff that's already being done passively huh. without you having to. I honestly have used it. like a, a, a calendar reminder for myself for oh, many years. It just boop, pops up. <laughs> Don't forget to post. I'm like, okay, random <laughs> post on all kinds of different yeah. things. Um, but I have used so- social media to leverage for many years mm-hmm. and it has worked for a good chunk of those years. Yeah. Um, but I have had to keep the concept of, you are a creator, not a consumer. Right. Stop. Don't get sucked in. Uh, jump in there. Do the likes and whatnot. Get off of there. Yeah. Um, and go do the things that you're intending to do to, to accomplish those goals. Right. Because I can tell the folks out there listening that if you're only posting on social media, but you're not boots on the ground, meaning doing what you say you're doing mm-hmm. in real life. Social media won't work. Well, you can only fake it till you make it for so long. That's so true. You know, people are going to only see the highlight reel and then they're going to see you in real life and be like, "Mm, I haven't seen her doing anything, you know? And so you have to have that narrative match what's really going on in real life. But yeah, I think that one of the things, do you have a social media manager? Um, JC manages our business page, but I personally have five Instagram accounts. Yeah, I know, we've same. got I mean we've got we've got <laughs> review my mortgage. We've got I think I've got Mark Jones the mortgage lender. I've got yeah, all this so stuff. Many. But the one that I stay true to and you can call me old or not, but Facebook, I, Facebook. <laughs> exactly. Well because it's all your <laughs> yeah. your real organic Absolutely. connections. Correct. You know? I feel like I get a lot more engagement on my Facebook because they're people that I actually Correct. really know where Instagram is just you never know who it's you're some gonna facade. get. But see the 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 hard thing with not being able to um, scroll and be a consumer is that now you're having to have more engagement with those people to be able to pop up on their you're exactly right feed. So I'm like, is it a good idea to get a social media manager to so separate I'll, those I'll things? I'll tell or? you from <clears throat> when I first got into the business back in 2012, 2013. Uh, I hired a company and they, it was super cheap. I mean, I think I was paying $200 a month for somebody to go in there and create posts and post them and all that good stuff. And I saw my engagement drop dramatically mm. and quickly. Because they want to know what you're actually doing. Absolutely. And that's, uh, I, I don't do classes for it anymore. Maybe I should. But that is one thing that folks tend to forget about is they're doing business with people that they know, like, and trust. The reason why they're following you is because it's you that's putting you out there. If you stop doing that, people can obviously see that it's not you anymore. Right. Um, It looks like a bunch of canned stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I think going live every once in a while is good. good. So people know that you you are you. Right. Uh, Being yourself 
the most you possibly can is the best way to do it because you don't want to do business with people that you don't relate with, that don't have the same commonalities. If right. I can't drop an F-bomb every once in a while, <laughs> it, it's not then something that like, I it's want. Not him. Yeah, exactly. He's an That's exactly right. <laughs> I mean, I used to not curse at all on yeah. social media. I'm talking like eight years out of the 11 years of my career. Yeah. And then finally, somebody said, dude, that's not you. You you do <laughs> tend to say, slip up every once in a while. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Especially if you're not directing it towards, towards someone. Anyone. Yeah. Right. So I would slip up every once in a while. I've got a shirt that says uh, classy as F-U-Z-K. <laughs> yeah. And people love it. Why? Because it's me. I'm not intending for it to be a derogatory thing. It's right. just, it's, it's humor. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's, it's authentic. authenticity. Auth that is a great right. way to put it. It's authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are out there portraying to be someone that you're not, mm -hmm. you're going to get discovered. Right. I mean, eventually you're going to get discovered. Right. So yeah, yeah that's my thoughts on that. And I, I think that hopefully it'll motivate others to either continue doing what they're doing or change what they think they're doing to being more authentic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Good question. Um, so from here, let's talk about your team. Okay. We haven't gotten a chance to, we've dabbled on a couple of things. You've alluded to that. Right. But, uh, okay, so in 2019 it was, right? Right. Tell me about that. I what was that like? Making that decision. Oh, my God. Going off on my well, you own. You know, honestly, it was one of those things, again, where I just didn't think it was attainable. Right. You know, I, I feel like I still had that, like, Oklahoma mentality of, like, this isn't possible. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not to that. I'm not Dave. I'm not, sure. you know, I'm not to that caliber of leader. And I did. I really, honestly, didn't know that I was ready, mm. you know, because I'm like, I don't, I mean, I don't know if... And I'm real big on like, I don't want to get sued sure, ever, sure. you know, and so it's a big responsibility. Yeah. So I'm like, man, am I, am I ready? But, um, I talked with a mentor of mine and she's like, go for it. Like, just do it. And so I think having people like that, yeah, that just really encourage you. They're like, why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been doing it for so long. Like, why not? You know? And so the minute that I made that decision, like it, everything happened so fast. Wow. I mean, you have an office, here's your keys, let's go. What's your office, what's your name, what's your brand? Like bam, 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 mm -hmm. you know? And it, I mean, literally you're talking about less than a week of like, okay, now we have an LLC, like <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's cool. And we're, you know, we have an office and all these things and- Responsibilities. And responsibilities <laughs> yeah. and now I'm liable, <laughs> yeah. yay. <laughs> so um, it was a lot, but I was- super thankful and I still am super thankful because then you know you you learn things as you work with others of okay I want to take this away and I want to do this or I don't want to do this because yeah. this didn't work you know and so um I felt like I had a lot of that under my belt mm -hmm. of like what I did and didn't want to do and the biggest thing for me was having a team of purpose yeah and so um you know there's so many teams out there and so many great teams sure. you know and so I'm like, okay, this is this is one where people have to have like a servant's heart, willing to serve not only their clients, but also volunteering and doing community things. And so um, it just launched and it just like organically happened. Um, we started with a team of three, you know, and things happen, you know, people fall out, fall out, in. whatever, Absolutely. you know, you been have there. growing pains. Um, and so now we have a team of five. Okay. Um, all amazing, incredible women, okay. um, all from very different backgrounds. And I think we all just very, ha all have a passion for serving and just have that heart. Each one of them have had their own journeys. Um, couple single moms, couple ones that just have had, you know, hardships and things like that, but want to be able to turn that around and give back and, um, you know, just do things with purpose. So we have a girl in Uvalde. Okay. We have one in Spring Branch. We have one in Bernie, one in um, New Braunfels. How many am I missing? Shirts, one in shirts. That's awesome. Um, and then um, my goal is to get my brokerage license. Okay. So I'm working towards okay. that. Okay, yes. So I need some accountability here. There you here. go, there you um, go. <laughs> and so I love I'm, it. I'm, my goal is to open a beach branch. Okay. Too. So I have some people that are wanting to kind of come on and yeah. and do that. But 
But yeah. So let me ask you, and, and you mentioned uh, something along these lines, but I'm going to pull it out of you. Okay. The concept of going through tough situations, tough times, um, being, um, I don't know, d- deeper into what some may consider a hole when you have uh, been kicked to the curb. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that the further kick to the curb that you've experienced has helped you understand how much further you can come to success? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'm a big advocate for making your pit your platform. Wow. So I feel like we are inten- like we're not here by accident. We're put in very intentional situations mm-hmm. that really suck sometimes. And trust me, like Mark knew me before. Oh yeah. Before he knew me. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk okay? about Bruno. Okay. <laughs> and I, if you know me and you really know me, you know that I have always chosen the hard path in life. Same here. Like, I, yeah. there could be an easy route. Oh, no, Danielle, you want to take the freaking hard road. That's, yeah. that's me a thousand percent. And so, but I wouldn't have it any other way mm-hmm. because I feel like that adversity, that pain, that hardship... Um, has really molded me and inspired me to be able to make that a platform for someone else. Yeah. And so I definitely feel like while that wasn't fun going through all those times, um, I have empathy. Yeah. And um, I do have tough love at times and because I know that it's possible. Right. Um, But I also can have the empathy and provide hope and things like that and be used in that way to be able to inspire others. And so, yes, I, I definitely think... It's I think, rough, I think but... a lot of folks get empathy confused um, these days with uh, a level of feel sorry for someone. Mm-hmm. Empathy is, is in my opinion, understanding right. where they're coming from, right. understanding Thousand their percent. logic, their path, um, and also understanding how you can help them get to the next level. A to or B. Answer, it, correct. Um, these days, we're hearing a lot of folks, you don't have any empathy. Well, I understand what you're coming from, but that doesn't change the way that I'm going to deliver approach this message. It. Yeah, the approach right. that I'm going to take because I know that this is what it's going to take for you to get out of it. Right. Your lack of understanding and me being empathetic mm-hmm. could be your downfall because I'm here to help you right. type situation. And I feel like different, <laughs> different, <laughs> I can't think of any other. Different strokes for different yes, folks? that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> Uh, yes, there's different strokes for different folks. And I feel like, you know, while tough love may be for someone, it may not be for someone else. Mm-hmm. And so um, I definitely needed tough love, Same. you know, at times because um, and and I didn't like it in the moment, mm-hmm. you know, and we don't like, oh, that person's such a jerk. Right. You know, but at the same time, well, did it get you to move? Sure did. Got you to move. (laughs) For the most part. So, but then sometimes, you know, people are in such, I can see where some situations where someone may be in a lot of despair or something and you're just, you need to encourage them. Right. You know, because I've definitely had encouragement in my life too. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think it just depends on, you know, where they're at, but I tend to, I don't know, I feel like I go both ways, but um, yeah, I think empathy is a form of just understanding where they're at and the potential they have right. and where they can That's huge. go. That's huge right there is the, the potential and seeing potential in others, especially as a leader. And in the situation, too. Correct. Like, you know, if you think the sky is falling, you know, hey, like this really isn't that big a deal, you know? Right. All you have to do is let me paint perspective for you. Step outside of it and look, you know. So no, I like that. I mean, you've you've got uh, (laughs) you've been through quite a bit, (laughs) and and, and to come out of it on the other side to where you can not only share your success but also continue to work towards your success and share it with others around you is super important. Yeah. Um, and necessary for today's market, for right. today's world that we're living in. I think it's all about problem solving too. Yeah. You know, you, when you have that empathy and you have that understanding and everything, you can problem solve mm-hmm. a little bit better, and especially when you've been through, right. you know, you've chosen the hard oh, path. Yeah. You're like, I've already tried A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm-hmm. You know, I already know how those I are going to go. That. <laughs> so you, you're able to problem solve. I, I was talking to somebody recently about how, like this generation, it's it's they're having a harder time problem solving because right. I feel like you have your phone and you can do an equation, you can look up Correct. anything that you want, and you have that instant answer instead of having to like mm-hmm. think about it. Okay, how could this work? What would this outcome? What's a plan B, C? Right. 
you know. Um, well, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to go as far as to say that someone like yourself is truly blessed to have gone through what you went right. through, because today's generation um, and this is a bold statement, but today's generation has never really failed at anything. Right. It's it's always if you fail, oh, it's OK. No big deal. We can do this. Here's You're still getting this participation <laughs> medal. I'm literally saying that. Yeah. Um, and there's very few that can tell their story and yeah. share with others. And then that few that tell their story, the others that have never been through it yeah. don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah. Eh, well, no, that that's. No, I'm, I'm not going to take that next step. I'm not going to right. fail. I, I've seen that. Well, it's like they want to go from A to D, like without having to do the, the hard work. The hard work. And so you see all these shows, you know, like the Selling Sunsets sure. and the all the real estate shows that make it so easy peasy to do, mm -hmm. but you don't see all the problems. So, I mean, I was on the call this morning at seven o'clock this morning trying to problem solve something. Right. You know, you, you have to have those. And <laughs> I don't know how many, um, we have a video of, uh, one of my agents, Angela and I, at a listing the other day, we're cleaning up pill bugs and poop mm. off a, you know, for a listing for right. a picture. I mean, it's gritty work. Right. You don't see all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't see the problem solving. You don't see the hard stuff. Um, and so I can't tell you how many people that I've had that are like, you know, you come across and they're like, well, I want to do what you're doing and I want to make the money that you're making and do it. You know, it's like, whoa, I'm 15 years in and it's, I'm just now figuring out my groove, right. you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. The amount of mm -hmm. people that have reached out to me and, and there have been plenty that I have actually given opportunities. Come on board, get licensed, do your thing. Let's go. Then two, three months in, they're like, well, where's the money? And I'm it's like, well, where's the work? Right, right. <laughs> you, you've got to put in the work for a long time right. before you see the benefit and to the point that you actually like doing the work. Right, <laughs> right. Know? And enjoy it. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's the thing is um, it looks like instant gratification when you're looking at it. Right. Like, okay, you just show a house, you get the dollar bills, like, no let's go. Deal. No big deal. But I mean, it's so much more than that. And Every now and then you get blessed with a super easy deal. Yeah. That is like one in far and few between. One in two hundred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there even such <laughs> a thing? Let me anymore? tell you, it's been a while. I'm due for some. <laughs> you know, but um, you know, I, I feel like each transaction you learn something, you mm -hmm. apply it. Right. You know, we talk about like our um our team, we talk about our failures and they're not failures if we can learn from them and grow from them. That's right. You know, and so um, we're real big on that because no transaction is the same. And the girls will tell you, um, you know, you've been in it for so long, but yet you're still seeing new things. I mean, Correct. yeah, because nothing is the same, you know, no transaction, no two transactions are the same. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you're learning something every single time that you can apply. Right. And then share that, you know, with the team. Hey, I learned this and this and this. Well, I think the concept of let's call it a doctor's practice yeah they don't call it a, a doctor's perfection right. right right same thing with real estate yeah it's not you're practicing real estate why because every day you're learning and you're no one out there knows exactly what to do always right you're constantly learning and practicing your trade your craft um and i i get a lot of these folks to to try and understand that you're not going to be perfect. You're yeah. going to fail. Yeah. But there are good days, great days, and learning days. Right. And those learning days may be pretty tough sometimes. Right. But as long as you took something away that you can apply to the next day, yeah. I, I don't see that as a bad day. Right. You know? Right. Are you still here? You still wake your ass up tomorrow? <laughs> we're, good. we're good. Hey, we're good. <laughs> we're good. Because it can be a whole lot worse yeah. in many situations. Yeah, it can. Definitely, uh, for sure. And we all have our you know, our, our days and our deals that are challenging and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But yeah, I agree. Like if you, you can learn something and take something away, then, you know, you're going to be It's not a great. bad day at the office. It's not a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in closing this, um, tell us where you are planning to head with your group. How big do you want to yeah. get? I already know that you guys give back to the community. You do yes. what you can in regards to that. Um, you definitely inspire at least other women in our profession <laughs> yes. to do what they're doing. Fun statistic, um, back to equality, uh, the 
the ratio of women to men in this business, real estate, yeah. is like 47 to 53. So for 47 to, it's it's like darn near right neck and neck. Um, and I just saw that the other day and I was like, no way. Okay, that makes well, perfect sense. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Now we're, now we're it getting does. it. Yeah. Um, but where do you see your group going? How big do you want to get? Is it something that you'd like to leave a legacy on? Is it something that you would like to empower the others to grow uh, with under you? What, yeah. what is your goal with that? So my goal is ultimately to see the girls I have succeed. My goal is to grow mm -hmm. um, as big as it'll get. Um, I would love to see them start their own teams underneath once you know I, sure. I get um, my brokerage license. I think it would be awesome. I, I just want them to succeed in everything. And so we're already, you know, working on you know, what does that look like right. for you guys whenever you want to do that? So they'll have the option once I'm a broker to either be an individual, mm -hmm. be a partner or have their own team. Um, and so, yeah, my goal is to grow. Um, so right now we're in the hill country, you know, Uvalde, San Antonio, those, sure. those areas. Right? And I New love that that is your concept. It's like put somebody here, put somebody there, put, uh -huh. and, and now they can become the experts in that territory. Right. So my goal ultimately is to, 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 so to have a buyer's list, uh, agent, a seller's agent, so they can help each other. Love it. Um, but my goal also is to have a beach branch. Yeah. And I, I would love to see that come to fruition. I love the beach. I go back and forth. Um, it's, there's going to be so much development down there. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I was looking at some offices maybe there, there you go. eventually. So I, I just, um, would love to see it grow and all over Texas. Cause I just, I feel like we're just a unique kind of concept where, um, it's more about the heart, mm -hmm. more about the, you know, servant's heart. And, and when you have that, um, authenticity and mm -hmm. you have that genuine connection to people, it just naturally organically succeeds as it should, as it should. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not a salesy salesperson. I'll tell all my clients that like, if you want the house, great. If you don't, I'm not the one to push you. Like, right. that's just not me, Gotcha. you know, but I want, and, and most of my girls are that way where they, you know, it's like, we want you to want right. what you're getting so that you, we have repeat business. And so big portion of our business is referrals and actually from other agents. Gotcha. That um, don't work those certain territories. Right, yeah. So right, now you're don't, branding yourself right, that way. Don't work in Uvalde or don't work in um, the beach or wherever it mm -hmm. is. Um, and so we're really big on referrals because we want to be able to have that repeat I love it. business. And so... We're not for everybody, you know, um, we're, you know, we're not going to be like, you need a cold call 50,000 people, sure. you know, like that's just not our thing. Um, but if you have a heart for serving and a heart for giving and, you know, want to think about others first and, and all of that, then we're definitely your team. And we're not just, I mean, we're girls, but eventually my goal is to add some guys in there. <laughs> you got to have some testosterone, You know, <laughs> I know, I know. It just kind of happened that way, but, um, you know, no, I, I, I love the girls. We, we kind of laugh because we're in such a encouraging little hype bubble. Sure. So when you get out of that sometimes, and then you realize like there's some whoa. people that are, whoa, this is hard. Like we went to an event one time and there were some people not being very nice. And we're like, what the heck? Like, yeah. who are these what? people? <laughs> I'm like, it's okay. Come here. I will, <laughs> I will take care of you. That's funny. You know? So let me ask one final question. And, um, this is not canned or anything. I just, want to know what I don't believe that there's a lot of new agents getting into the business. Um, but there may be quite a few agents that are considering getting out of the business because it's becoming tougher and tougher. Yeah. What's some advice that you would give to those folks? Well, I think you need to, um, really look at why you're, why you got into the business. If it's just, you know, like the instant gratification kind of thing, then it's probably not your jam. Yeah. Um, if you got into it because you genuinely love people and love helping people. And like we talked about like that little high feeling, the yeah. buzz. Um, and you, you know, really want to um, just see people be, accomplish their goals, their real estate goals. Then I would say keep, keep at it. Um, get an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. Set the steps. Do the work. Like 
I still do door knocking and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I still send postcards. I write letters. Mm-hmm. I We do pop buys. I still coach on that stuff. Pop buys are huge for mm-hmm. us. We do them. Um, I mean, we're doing peeps right now. Like how my peeps call your people. Peeps. Yeah. You know, like we do a lot of that. So you're going to have to get back to the basics. You're going to have to connect with people. Um, That's huge, Danielle. That's huge. Yeah. Because a lot of folks out there think that they, there's some kind of pill Magic. that you can if take. I, if I sign up for this or if I, mm-hmm. you know... And one of the things I was talking to one of the agents on my team about was um, we were talking about like a lead service or, a, you know, those kind of things where you call. That's just not me. Right. And I think that works for some people. And that's great. Like, that's just their their thing. It's just not mine. Um, I feel like it's a lot more effective to go out and have that connection. Ha- go out, you know, if it's a first sale by owner, go talk to that person. You know, go go figure out, you know, why are they selling? Maybe do some, like, offer them a service. You know, we talked about this. Tell them you're going to sell that house for free. Yeah. You'll do the paperwork, and then you'll help them on their buy because they're not going to buy anything. Mm-hmm. You're offering them something and offering them a value right. and connecting with them and finding out genuinely what's going on and offering your knowledge and stuff versus a phone call that you're going to, you know, they've had how many. Correct. You know, and I... Again, I think that works for some people, but I just feel like an organic, authentic connection goes so far. I agree. I mean, you know? you're delivering value um, that they can then apply to whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish. It's huge. Yeah. It's, it's very big. I think, you know, for me, starting in Oklahoma, that helped because, I mean, it was for sell by owners and expireds. Like, that's what I did because I didn't know anyone. Right. I didn't have a sphere of influence there. Mm-hmm. So you, you know, you... I kind of like my brain switches when it starts to get slow. Yeah. Okay. Well, what can I do to get back? That's in right. That, That's you know, right. what can I do to go make those connections? And That's so same here. I mean, when, you know, when the market shifted, it was like, I know exactly what to do right uh-huh, now. <laughs> uh-huh. We're going to focus on this right now, everybody. Mm-hmm. And they were like, but that, it's hard. <laughs> oh, yeah? What kind of market you think we're in right now? Yeah, yeah. Um, only the strong will survive. It. I feel like you have to get creative. So I feel like if your heart's definitely in this industry, don't get out. Like, don't take the easy way out. Yeah. Um, put the work in. Mm-hmm. And I definitely feel like, um, you know, and I'm a big, obviously I've talked about it, like a big faith person. I'm, I'm real big on like, Centering yourself and figuring out, you know, praying to God, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Right. You know, and if it is, do the work. Yeah. Do the things, do the steps, you know, go back to the basics and it'll, it'll, and usually it doesn't happen immediately. You're planning out for your next, like I have, um, eight, nine deals right now, but that's because a month ago right. I you was doing all the stuff. So you've mm-hmm. got to plan for your next 30 days. You Absolutely. know, how does that look? Mm-hmm. So I like that. We've learned uh, quite, a, I personally <laughs> have learned quite a bit about you. I yeah. have also pulled some things out that a lot of folks out there can take and use and implement in their business. And hopefully they do. Yeah. And it's not just fluff that you're giving. These are real events, real yeah. experiences. Um, and the biggest thing that I took away from this is you essentially grow through what you go through. Yep. Right? Yep. Thousand percent. Sound about right? Thousand percent. (laughs) Uh, So that in itself, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. Um, And I want to- You made this so easy. (laughs) Not bad for the first time. I know. It's like a freaking awesome pro. (laughs) (laughs) So that being said, uh, guys out there, I did want to bring it back real quick for uh, kind of a, a reveal of something that we've been working on for quite some time. You've heard in every one of these episodes that we are powered by ReviewMyMortgage.com. Well, we have finally launched ReviewMyMortgage.com and bringing it to you in its beta format. So you can visit ReviewMyMortgage.com, self-diagnose on the thousands of programs that my partner and I have taken a ton of time to put in there based on lender guidelines um, and essentially get yourself to where you need to be uh, educated wise on what mortgage programs uh, nationally that you can qualify for. So we are live beta and we will be for about 60 days and then we will open it up to the public and essentially be onboarding pro lenders nationally. It's something pretty big. So Zillow, you watch out. Um, But I, again, Danielle, thank you so much thank for joining you. me today. I'm hoping that this goes super, super far yes. because it was a great message. Thank you. Um, and guys, gals, <laughs> we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.
Oh my goodness. Are you tired of feeling overwhelmed and underinformed during the mortgage process? Look no further than ReviewMyMortgage.com. With our revolutionary Loan Smart tool, you can self diagnose your particular criteria and access thousands of mortgage programs to educate yourself. Whether you're a first time buyer, repeat buyer, or an investor, our website offers a wealth of information to help you make informed decisions. So don't go about buying, selling, or refinancing a home alone. Educate yourself at ReviewMyMortgage.com, the largest index of mortgage programs nationally, an educational website built for the next generation of future homeowners just like you.